Hey guys, this is Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and this is the first video in a new set of videos I'm doing about business, and doing this video for primarily for surveyors, GIS professionals, young younger professionals that want to learn more about business. Uh, surveyors tend to not be very good business people. <laughs> Civil engineers have that same problem. Um, so what I want to do in these videos is uh, either take a, an article that somebody's written or a chapter from a book or a concept, business concept, and kind of try and explain that concept and then use some specific examples where I try and explain that to running a land surveying business or running another, another similar uh, real estate business, either consulting or or land development, that kind of thing. And so I hope these videos will help help other surveyors learn to be better business people. Um, one of the, the most valuable things I've done in the last 10 years is really make an effort to, to learn more about business. So I, you know, I read the Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg Business Week, and I subscribe to HBR, Harvard Business Review, and I read uh, MIT, Sloan, uh, magazine about business so yeah, just try and absorb as much as I can not all that stuff is <laughs> necessarily uh, gonna help you be a better business person and you can't believe everything you read but I've learned a lot and so I want to share some of that uh, share some of that with others so what I want to talk about today is is one of the uh, articles that I most enjoyed uh, was as Harvard Business Review article and the title of it was meeting the challenge of disruptive change and the Kind of the, the crux of the article is why organizations have a hard time uh, adapting to disruption in their market and what businesses need to do to, to be able to deal with that problem. And that, that's not even the part of the article that was really profound for me. What was profound for me was the first part of the article where the authors kind of set up why it's hard for, for businesses to deal with disruptive change. So they talk about why that is. Uh, and it's just some fundamental understanding of, of how businesses work that I just have was really blew my mind. And once I read it so much about my own experience as a land surveyor, it started to make sense. And so I want to just go over the first part of that article. I'm not going to cover the second half or so, second two thirds, but I'm just going to go over the first portion. And so the, the title of that article again is uh, "Meeting the Challenge of Disruptive Change." I'll try and put a link link to it in the comments for this video on YouTube. But the title of this talk, really the theme for this video is organizations have capabilities too. And that's really the point that the authors are making in the first part of their, their article. So the organizations, right, which could be a business, could be a nonprofit, could be a government agency, organizations have capabilities too. And that was a really profound concept for me and the, the authors do a good job of explaining it and they also talk a little bit about values you know how, how capabilities or processes become embedded in, and help develop a company's culture and uh, you know a, a business culture organization culture is another thing I'm really interested in because I've worked at some places that really sucked and so was, as a business owner I wanted to have a great place to work and that's not something I just I wanted to pay lip service to. I really wanted to give it some thought. And so part of this article helped me understand the relationship between business processes and culture. So let, let's get into it. And I'm going to just dive right into the key concepts here from the first part of this article. And I've got some study notes here. We'll, we'll post, that, post that online and I'll link to that in the video, the video comments on YouTube as well. So... The first key concept in the article is that business leaders need to think about their organization's capabilities as carefully as they think about the capabilities of individual people. And so that, that's this thought right here, organizations have capability too. So one of the things we do as managers, if you're a good manager, you spend a lot of time thinking about each member on your team and their strengths and their weaknesses and what roles best suited for them and do you have them in the right role or do they need a different role? Can you craft a role that will help them be successful? And that's really important in surveying uh, organizations, especially because good talents are defined. And it takes a really special set of skills to be a good surveyor. And so uh, that's one thing I learned from, 
from Dylan Crawford. I worked for him at Odell Engineering, Odell Engineering in Modesto, and Dylan and I spent a lot of time when I worked for him uh, thinking about people's strengths and weaknesses and the and the roles that we put them in. And I had some good experiences with Dylan crafting new roles to to address problems we were having as a survey organization. Um, and, and so I learned a lot. So most managers spend a lot of time thinking about individual people and what their capabilities are. What we don't spend as much time about time thinking about is the fact that our organizations have capabilities too independent of the people and that was the real insight that I got from this article. So the, the authors explain that there's three factors that affect what an organization can do and what they can't do and those three things are their resources, their processes, and their values and we're going to talk about each one briefly. So the resources that a business has available to it are the people, equipment, technology, cash, product designs, brands, the business relationships that they have. So those are all resources that a business uses to get its work done. So I thought, I thought, well, how can I explain that in a surveying context? How can I apply it to land surveying? So if you, if you think about the typical survey business, you know, what are the resources that a typical survey business has? So they have their equipment, the vehicles, the instruments that they have, toll stations, GPS, hydrographic sounder, whatever it might be, UAV. We have our computers, we have our buildings, we have our people. To some extent, surveying businesses have a brand name, maybe they have a website, right? They have relationships. So all those things are resources that they use to get their job done. What I'd like to do is, is do another a video, business video, that talks about how the resources that surveyors use to get their work done is, is different from other types of businesses and, and the mix is different, you know, what's more important, people or equipment and, and you know why is it hard as a surveying business to compete just based on your equipment and so we'll talk about some of that uh, but not in this video but so those are the resources uh, so organizations themselves independent of their people and other resources have capabilities and these capabilities the authors say reside in an organization's processes and in its values and those things are independent of the individual people that work there okay so they have a beautiful way to illustrate this in the in the article they say you could take the same set of people so let's say the same team of 10 take them out of one organization and put them in a different organization same set of 10 people and they're going to perform differently because they're in a different context they're in a different framework right so maybe that that group of people is really really successful at organization A but you take those people and put them in organization B and they're not successful. What's changed? Well, it's not the people, and it's not even the way that team works together. They've been working together successfully, right? It's something about the organization that changes. And the authors bring out, they're trying to demonstrate that it's the, it's the processes and the values of the organizations that are different. And so processes really matter, and the values of a company really matter. And, and I want to give you an, I want to apply that to surveying. And so I'll give you an example. I'll illustrate that with my own career. So the first 12 years, I worked at a company that primarily did public works surveying, so large-scale right-of-way mapping, topographic mapping for, for public works projects, dams, highways, bridges, levees, canals. And the, the next three or four employers I worked at did not specialize in that kind of work. So they were mostly private development, companies that did private development, one of the companies I worked for did mostly utility work. And they would hire me to, to build this line of work in their organizations. And in each one of those places, I really struggled to do that. And it's not that I didn't work hard because I worked really hard. And it's not that I didn't think a lot about it because I did. I lay awake nights thinking about it. So part of what this helped me to, to understand is that every one of those places I went, I was trying to build out a new type of work and there was a huge amount of capability development that I had to do at every place. And I, that part I, I understood. So, you know, every place I went to, I would have to design templates and standards and train people on the way, the way that type of work got done. Um, and it was a huge effort. Um, and I would work 70 or 80 hours a week trying to get that done. And I realize now, looking back, that, I, you know, to a certain extent, I was fighting entrenched values and processes because I was trying to do something different. And it, it would have been easier to do it from scratch at a new company than, than, it, than it is. It's easier to do that often than it is to go into a to an existing company and try and build something new. And that's basically the point that the article, the, the whole article makes. 
So processes matter and values matter. And you could take a, somebody that was really successful, I was very successful at my first employer as a surveyor um, and was trained well and performed well, I, I believe. And you, you put me in, in a different organization with a different set of processes and a different set of values and I struggled and that was very frustrating. So this article helped me understand why. Okay, here's the second key concept. And it, it talks about what is a business process, okay? When we say an organization has a capability, what is that? So a business process is a pattern of communication, coordination, interaction, or decision-making that's used to take resources and to transform them into products or services of greater value than the inputs to the process. So a process is something that an organiz you know, it's what an organization uses to take some resources and turn it into a product of greater value, right? So let's apply that to a surveying context. So you know, a surveying company has people and they have equipment and, they, and those people have some special training, right? So what do surveyors do? They, they take that equipment, they use it, they actually use it to perform measurements in the field, right? And they come in the office, they take those measurements, they do stuff with that data that was collected, that measurement data, and then they produce a product like a map, okay? So it's a perf surveying is a perfect example of how organizations take a process, they take the resources that they have, they apply the resources to the process, and they produce a product of greater value when they're done, in theory, <laughs> okay? So the article says processes can be formal or informal. So a formal process is one that's documented. An informal process is just, to some extent, it's part of the culture. Okay, and so I, I try to think of an example. So I'll use Redefined Horizons as an example of that. Um, at Redefined Horizons, our proposal process is, is fairly formal. So when we're going to prepare a proposal for a client, there's a, a certain number of steps that we do every time. It's not a lot of steps. It's a half a dozen. Uh, but we do those steps every time, right? Prepare a standard agreement, prepare a scope of services, prepare a fee estimate, prepare a cover letter, prepare mapping limit exhibits. And we just, we do those things on every single proposal gets done. Now at the same time, so that's a, that's a formal process. At the same time, when my partner and I sit down and decide there's an opportunity that we have and we sit down to decide if we're going to pursue that opportunity, that is not a formal process right now at Redefine Horizons. So that's a conversation that my partner and I have and we talk about all kinds of things. How, you know, what's our current workload? Who's the client? What type of client? Are they a good client? Are they a bad client? Where is the work located? Is it, you know, is the project well suited to our skill set? And that's just, we don't have a formal documented process for that yet. That doesn't mean we won't at some point, but right now the company's small. And it's just a conversation. So that's an informal process. The article brings out sometimes informal processes are more important than formal processes. So as a manager, you can get into trouble, especially when you step into a new organization, because you're going to be looking at the formal processes, but it's all the informal ways of doing things that, that really make a huge difference. I remember telling somebody one time, I, I worked for the same company the first 12 years I was a surveyor, and the first month I was at my, my new employer, I realized, I said, I, I feel like I'm a baby. I don't know how to do anything. I don't know how to open a job number. I don't know how to, I don't know how you guys create a proposal. I don't know how to authorize an expense for a field crew. I don't know how to order supplies. Um, so there's all these things you got to learn. A lot of them not written down. It's just informal um, when you started a new job. So processes, the article says, aren't made to change. They are designed to execute a repeated task with consistency and efficiency. So it's a recipe you're following every time. Step one, step two, step three. And there could be some small variability in the, in the process. You know, maybe if you meet this condition, you do this step. But if you don't, you do this step. But yes, it's, it's a series of related, inter, interconnected, related steps that you follow. Right? So, you know, we're... I'd like to do another talk just about business processes because I think they're really important and, and surveyors don't do a good job of them typically. But, you know, those, those having a standard process, what does that do? It enables consistent results. You know, work is done consistently the same way, which means your results are more consistent. You have better quality because you can catch mistakes, you're following a checklist. And it also makes it easier to train your people, right? Like, all right, how do we do an elevation certificate here? We got, hey, we got a process for that. Here's exactly how we do it. One, two, three, four, right? Or, hey, how do we do a land title survey? Hey, we got a process for that. Here's a start to finish. One, two, three, four, right? Okay, I would say uh, probably one of the best surveying organizations I know of at process is Caltrans. And people, you know, talk a lot of smack on Caltrans. I will occasionally talk a little smack on Caltrans, but 
I tell you what, they are second to none when it comes to having formal processes about how surveyors are supposed to do their work. So I encourage you to check out the Caltrans survey manual if you haven't done that and you're interested in survey processes.